Welcome to the FlowerSchool.com video library. I'm Leanne Kessler, Director of the Floral Design Institute, here to share with you our latest segment on the European style bridal bouquet. So what exactly is a European bouquet? How do you define that? You've probably seen them. They're generally low, flat, they can be round, they can be square, they can even be triangular. Oftentimes, they're built upon a structural armature to allow you to spread them out even more. They're usually made up of interesting materials with a lot of focus on texture. And the finished arrangement is a floral tapestry, a work of art, as well as a beautiful bouquet. The most difficult part in creating a European bridal bouquet is creating that armature and having it be stable and secure. The Oasis Company, they came up with a wonderful solution. We're all familiar with Oasis. They're the ones that provided us the holders that we've used for years and years. They're stable in our industry. But now, they've created a new one, a European style holder. It's got this broad surface. They come in square and they also come in round. And they are fabulous because they allow you to create that armature look without the armature work. And the added bonus of the Max Life Foam, it gives you the water reservoir to keep your flowers alive for so very long. It's just a grand new option for creating the European style bridal bouquets. The first step is to fully hydrate the holder, just setting it into water and letting it sink naturally. Of course, I've already got flower food in here as well. So that as it saturates, it's filling with food which will keep my flowers alive so well. Now once it's saturated, it's got a little bit longer, I can still see the bubbles of air coming out. Once it's saturated, you'll notice it's heavier because it's a lot more foam than what you're used to in that little holder. So when you lift it, there is a little bit of weight to this, but it's really not bad. It's amazing because with the foam being a thin layer, it's not that heavy. And since you generally are going to make your bouquets a day ahead of time, some of this water will be absorbed by the flowers, so it will be even a little bit lighter as the bride goes to carry it. So you don't need to be concerned. The weight isn't going to be an issue. Just like with the traditional holders, my first step is always to conceal the back and the sides because this plastic coating protects the water from the hands and such, but it's also not the most attractive, so you want to conceal that. What I do is just turn it upside down, and then I'm going to use lamb's ear. It has that wonderful texture and that gray color is so popular right now. I'm just cutting off individual leaves and then taking, laying them out and spraying them with Super 77 spray glue. And then we'll just adhere them directly to the surface on the sides, the back, and the handle. I spread the leaves out, give them a light dusting, and then starting on the sides, adhere them directly to the holder, working your way around. Then once the sides are done, you want to start coming up towards the center, overlapping, making sure you get solid coverage. And then once you've done that, you're going to come on up with another layer going towards the handle and working up the handle until you get the whole thing covered, just like this. And then you can go back and if there's a spot you don't like, go ahead and just add one over the top. You can keep filling in, making sure that it's completely covered just the way you want it to be. The finished back can be enhanced even a little more with the addition of decorative wires. Just a little bit of aluminum wire, not very much, maybe 15 inches or so, a little bit of metal wire, a little bit of bullion wire, and just wrap that around the handle to create a little bit of glitter and glitz, some sparkle. Taking the gray of the lambs here and adding into a little bit of the silver shiny metallic. Just wrapping it round and round and going back with another, wrapping it around. 
And what I'm doing is helping to make sure that where the bride's going to hold the bouquet, there's not going to be any problem with the leaves kind of shattering as they might to dry from the heat of her hands. And it protects the handle and adds a little bit of glamour as well. The finished holder then, I can just set into anything to support it while I work. This beautiful urn, it just fits right on top. Let you know that not only can it be used as a bridal bouquet, but that it can also be used as a design mechanic for an arrangement. Lots of fun things. I'm going to wrap it now with some mega beads. And if you've worked with these, you know that untangling them takes a little bit of patience. But it's actually easy if you're just slow and trying to wind back and forth. They'll come right off the roll. But you have to be patient and gentle. Don't tug. Just give it a little wiggle, and then they come right off. Then I can add them. Just taking the end, giving it a cut, and insert it right into the foam, and then start wrapping. Now, everything I've done so far doesn't really need water. So you think, well, why bother? But if I tried to build an armature, it takes so much longer. Also, now that I've got this started, I can go back and add fresh flowers. The viney clematis, and it'll go right into the foam so it will continue to drink. Getting the stem and insert it in, and then just bring it, winding it around the beads. Letting it kind of work its way through, gently manipulating. And then lashing it together by just rolling the bead around it. Since it's already wired, it'll stay right in place. And you can see I haven't cut it off of the roll yet, because I'll probably go back and add a few more beads when I'm done. But I start just by inserting the stem right into the foam so it's going to be able to drink, and then bringing it and letting that vine become part of the border. And then when I get to this end, wrapping that bead around again, taking another piece. And what I'm doing is creating a faux armature. So it's the image of an armature, but with the luxury of having everything in foam. So I started with the mega beads. And now I end with the mega beads. By ending with them, I can help to make sure that the clematis stays in place and just kind of lock things in. Bring it up a little higher this time so it'll show more. Bring it on around. Just weaving it in and out, making sure I don't damage any of the blooms. And tucking it. Then winding it. Bring it down and then back up over. And as I get to the end, I can just take it and insert it back down in the foam to secure it in place. For security, I'm going to go through and use hairpins and just pin a few of the areas to make sure that none of that winding can come undone. You know how much a nervous bride shakes. and You want to make sure that this is all going to stay together, be beautiful from beginning to end of the ceremony. So just a few hairpins strategically placed. Make sure that it locks everything so that it won't move and shift on you. Then we're ready to pave the center. And my beginning of the pave in the accent area is going to be a fabulous succulent. It's so popular right now, and this blue-gray color, oh, grand with the clematis. Now this one actually has a stem. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes you have to add your own stem. If you need instruction on that, check out our resource library. We have a whole segment on how to work with succulents. But these, with the stem, it's nice and easy. Just give it a cut, and then I place it directly into the foam. Just feeding in, a little bit off-center. And then I'm going to go back and add roses. And I've got some beautiful lavender roses, and I cut them down very short because I don't want them to come up too high. I want to just pave or pave the surface of the foam, grouping them together, creating a luxurious burst of color. 
can even bring it down a little bit at an angle, filling in that corner, and coming back with a darker purple. Isn't that gorgeous? Filling in. So you can mix your colors of roses for a little more interest. Bring it over. And if I do the dark in the back, I don't want to stop there. I want to make sure and carry it forward so that I get almost a line of that deep purple building from the back of the bouquet over to the front. Just because they're flat doesn't mean they have to be totally flat. So you can take materials like another succulent, again with a long stem, and terrace it over the first, creating a little more height and interest. Just kind of separate the leaves, and slide him in, so it builds up back here. And then taking a rose and bringing it down the side so you drop your color, finding a spot here, adjusting my beads, and then sliding it in, and then adding more textural materials, filling in, so that when you're done, the entire surface of the foam is concealed. The magic is hidden, and you've created the perfect illusion of an armature bouquet, but with the luxury of knowing that all your flowers have access to a water source. There's foam in there to keep them alive. To add depth, a few more of the clematis vines. These don't even have flowers on them. They're just the vines left over. Giving it a cut and then inserting it down in the foam and then winding it across and inserting it back down in the foam so that I create another layer of interest and even greater texture. Up and over. Maybe another one. And I mean, just dividing where the roses are to make room, slide it in there. And I could even take a single clematis bloom, keeping it low, but adding it into the design. So kind of finding a perfect spot here, maybe right here. Pull off some of the leaves and sliding it in with the succulent to bring that color and that bloom shape upward. So now we've got succulents, we've got clematis, we've got even just the vines, then the astrancha and the brunia for texture. And when you're done, you have a beautiful bouquet. The European style bridal bouquet no longer needs to be intimidating. It's so easy now, thanks to the Oasis Company and their new holders. In square and round, they make creating these textural tapestries easy and oh so long lasting because they have the water reservoir. And this color palette with the purples and lavenders and blue gray and silver, perfect for a vineyard wedding. And the vining of the clematis makes me think of the grapevines. Now, creating it on the holder makes me realize just how easy it is. A bride's going to absolutely love this, and I, as a professional florist, I also love it as well because I know I can make it and rest assured that the flowers are going to hold well with the water source. If you would like more creative inspiration, if you like this, you're going to love our other videos at flowerschool.com. Check it out. If you've got questions, we're here to answer. Give us a call at 1-800-819-8089, or you can contact us directly through the website at flowerschool.com. If you've got questions that email is easier, 
use my personal email. It's Leanne, L-E-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, at floraldesigninstitute.com. And as you create your own European-style bouquet using the holders, send me a picture. I'd love to see what you create and how it works for you. I know you're going to be impressed about how easy it is and how fabulously beautiful they are. For now, it's your turn. Have fun and do something you love.